The Boy and the Pearl. A young boy and his mother are playing in a sandbox on the side of a marshy lake. The boy is frustrated. His sandcastles keep collapsing. The sand is too dry. His mother instructs him sternly, explaining that he had gotten the consistency of the sand all wrong. If there's not enough moisture in the sand, and there won't be enough surface tension between the sand molecules to hold them together, the boy should go to the lake and fill his water can with water. Then he can wet the sand, and it will be better to build with. The boy scowls and puts his head down dejectedly, but a moment later he grabs the can without looking at her and scampers to the lake shore. His mother calls out behind him that he must remember that if the sand is too wet, it will not work either. Then the surface tension between the sand and the water will be overpowered by the water's desires to flow, and the tower will collapse just as easily as if it were too dry. He must be careful to get just the right amount of water. But it is unclear if the boy has heard her. He is already distracted by a bird calling in the tall grasses off the path. Ignoring the corrective calls of his mother to stay on course, he dives into the reeds. It becomes shady as the leaves of grass arch over his head and block out the sun, but only for a moment. Soon he is through to the lake shore, where the light breaks in again. A meter or so away from him across the water is a thick tuft of grass, just large enough for a pair of feet. And there is the bird. She is yellow, shining brightly against the green grass. And she's singing. Without a moment's hesitation, the boy splashes into the muddy water and wades across. The bird, of course, immediately flies away, but something more interesting has already caught his eye. In all the loose mud that he has stirred up with his feet, there is a line of bubbles bubbling up from below. He reaches his arm into the murk and lets out a cry of delight when he pulls it out, dripping brown, a black clam glints in his fist. He clambers onto the grass-tuft island to inspect his prize, water can still in tow. He digs around in the mud for a suitable rock, and then immediately smashes the clam with a crunch, another cry of delight. A pearl shines in the newly revealed sunlight, only slightly scratched by the impact. More sounds of breaking shell and tearing ligaments, and then a slurp as the clam is swallowed raw. Then the boy unclenches his fingers to dream about what he has found. In the face of the pearl, he sees a beautiful sand tower glowing over the water. In the top of the tower, there is a window, and inside the window, he can see an old man admiring a pearl in his hand. A flash of light and the image vanishes, but the boy knows what he has to do. This pearl is the most important thing he has ever found. It must be returned to its proper place at the top of his sand tower. He could just see how it would happen. He would fill his water can with mud and water and then drop the pearl inside. Then he would return to the sandbox, pour out the can through the spout, and as the mud and water mixed with the sun and the air, they would fall to the ground as a perfectly formed sand tower. The pearl would come out of the spout right at the end and affix itself to the tower's peak, having guided the whole process in some sacred way. The boy fills the watering can with mud and water and then drops the pearl inside. Then he returns to the sandbox, dripping with mud, while his mother watches with stern amusement. The boy, with an unusual look of focus, slowly pours the can over the site of his previous tower. Murky water comes out in a trickle, but nothing else seems to be happening. The boy, pours, the boy, begins, to, the boy begins to pour faster, thicker mud. More splashing, but still no tower. Then the flow stops, stuck by something. The boy tips the whole can over, and perhaps there's a glint of white in that last plop of brown. It's difficult to say. The boy looks surprised. Where was his tower? Where was the pearl? A brief feeling of grief. His mother sighs and smiles. I wish you didn't have to get so dirty, she says, but I suppose that's always been part of this process. Very well, you've wet your sand. Now start building again.